Hello, hello, and welcome to Mad Knitting. Today is February 26, 2024. This is episode 57, and I'm Susan. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm so glad you're joining me today. You can find me elsewhere online as Madtown Mama on Ravelry and Madtown underscore Mama on Instagram. I am on Instagram quite a lot, and I share I share a lot about my life there. <laughs> so if you wanna know more, about the kinds of things that I'm up to, feel free to, to check that out. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about sock knitting and share some of my sock yarn stash. So this is a departure from my normal episode structure, which is a pretty pretty typical for video podcasters. Um, normally I share like what I'm wor working on, what I finished, maybe some things that are coming up. Um, but today I'm gonna to do a little bit of a stash flash because the knitting content is not so interesting, um, but I feel like I have some things to talk about. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. I am wearing, first of all, uh, the Paper Dolls Pullover. This is a pattern by Kate Davies. I finished this, I think about two years ago, and I used Sun Valley Fibers Tweed Fingering Weight. It's a super wash yarn blended with some nylon and a little bit of tweed, and it's knit at a very fine gauge, seven stitches per inch, which I like. I don't like loose gauge knitting, especially for color work. I'll show you a close up of the top. This paper dolls pattern, I mean, it looks like the paper dolls that you like cut out and unfold and then you get a whole string of them. Um, and that's what drew me to this pattern. I just thought it was so charming. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. It is the end of February. I live in Madison, Wisconsin. I don't think I mentioned that. And I think it's going to get up to about 60 degrees Fahrenheit today, which is wildly out of the norm or what should be the norm. And we've had like the mildest winter on record, except for a couple of weeks in January where we had a bunch of snow and some cold temperatures. It's just kind of felt like spring which is weird and disorienting. I know a lot of people like it because they like the sunshine and the warm weather, but I have tulips coming up. I have daffodils coming up outside and I should not be seeing those yet. Like not even close. So it's a little bit weird and disconcerting and I should not be able to wear this sweater yet. It's very lightweight. You can see it doesn't have the full length sleeves. I knit it to about elbow length. Um, it's not very warm. Like I'm, I made this intentionally as a transitional piece, something I could wear in the fall or the spring, you know, when the weather is mild, but still has a little bit of chill and that's what we're getting now. And it should still technically be winter. So I don't like it. Anyway. Okay. So. Um, I occasionally do these stash talk videos. Um, I don't want to share, I, I, I like watching the way other people organize their yarn and I like seeing some insight into how people approach stashing and organizing and yarn collection. Um, there's a lot of opinions out there about that and about how much is too much and whatever. Um, I just, find it kind of soothing, I guess. It's a little bit like ASMR for me. Um, I will never show my whole stash. It's large and it would take too long to go through it all. And I think it'd be pretty tedious to go through everything. But every once in a while, I like to share little bits here and there just to share a bit about my own approach to, to how I collect yarn and how that's changed over time. So first I'm gonna share a pair of socks that I just finished. Um, these are a gift and I need to send them off. And I've talked about them in my last few episodes, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and give you the details now, because this is all about socks and this is a pair of socks. Uh, looks like I have one end to hide, but close enough to being done. These are for my father-in-law. His birthday is this weekend. And I know that he likes handmade socks because I saw evidence that he's been wearing the ones I sent him last year, so he's getting more this year. Um, these are a nice deep dark brown, which is perfect for him. 
he wears a lot of, you know, kind of understated, traditionally, you know, Midwestern guy clothes. <laughs> a lot of brown and navy and khaki. Uh, the yarn is Wisco Sock from Utopia. It's a basic, you know, merino nylon blend um, in fingering weight. I used size one needles. I cast on 72 stitches for a size, about a size nine or nine and a half men's foot, uh, shoe size, I mean. Um, and this is just a basic recipe. So I did a two by two cuff at the top, some plain stockinette for the leg, an eye of partridge heel, which I very much like, especially in like tonal yarns, hand dyed yarns. Yeah, and then just made my way to the toe decreases. So these I need to pack up and send him. Um, my in-laws all live in North Carolina, so it'll take a few days to get there by the mail. Um, but I am very pleased with how these turned out. And I know they'll fit because he and my husband have about the same shoe size and I had my husband try them on to make sure. And even though they're men's socks, uh, there's a fair amount left in the skein. This is how much is left. So this would be enough for like heels, toes, and cuffs for another pair of socks or something, or a gnome or some other project. I don't know yet. Uh, our mail just got delivered and I wonder if the mail carrier ever sees me sitting here filming and wonders what the heck I'm doing. I don't know. I guess, you know, these days people do weird stuff in front of their phones all the time and it's kind of normal now, so maybe maybe she didn't even notice or maybe she doesn't care anyway so that's my finished object um i want to share some of the socks that i have made for myself that have worn particularly well and then i will get into some of the yarn that i've collected now these aren't all the socks that i have made for myself um, but these are the ones that i wear like constantly these are the ones that i pull out of the drawer first when they are clean and available First, I have three pairs of socks that were made with Patton's Croy. So I don't have any more Patton's left in my stash except for what's left over from other pairs of socks that I've made. Um, it seems like it's a little bit thicker than most sock weight yarn. Um, and it is sturdy. Oh my goodness. Um, I can't remember the exact blend. It's either 75-25 or 80-20. Um, super wash wool with nylon. But this stuff, I, these socks, I've had these for years, maybe as long as 10 years. I'm not entirely sure. Um, and they're still going strong. I wear these with boots. I wear them running when it's cold. Um, yeah, they're starting, some of them are starting to get a little bit thin. Like if you look real close at the tip of the toe on these, I don't know how well it's showing up here, but the, but they really are kind of, the yarn is thinning out. Um, when I get holes in socks, I tend not to, or I've, I've never actually fixed a pair of socks. Um, in my last episode, I did show you one sock that I found a hole and I wanna fix that, I still haven't. But as a rule, um, by the time I've gotten a hole in a pair of socks, it's because the entire foot has worn so thin that it's not worth saving. Um, and I suppose if I was going to be extremely thrifty, you know, I could rip back to the cuff because the cuff doesn't wear as much as the foot and re-knit the foot, but I just, I just don't. <laughs> so I have no idea what the color way is called. Um, I, I like this, it's kind of autumn colors, it's self-striping. Um, same with these. This one's very heathery pair. These are wearing even thinner than the pair that I showed you before. I might have made these first, I don't remember, but I've had them for years. I don't remember making them. And then this is some kind of springtime color. You can see with the self-striping that I tend to do a short row heel so that the striping pattern isn't interrupted quite as badly as it would be if, if I did it gusset, heel flap and gusset. Um, 
Even though heel flap and gusset is my preferred method, I'm fine with a short row heel if it helps with self-striping. So these, these are some pretty hardy socks. Um, you know, if I come across more patents, Croy, I might buy it. I don't know. They're not always the softest socks to wear, but they are very sturdy. So that's definitely a plus. Another yarn that I've used a lot for socks is Knit Circus. Um, I've talked about Knit Circus before. They are a local to me company that does a lot with gradients and self-striping, gradient self-striping, which is super cool. And they have all these other uh, methods of variegation and speckling and stuff that's pretty neat. Um, but one of the things they do is they produce these sock sets. So they'll have like two little skeins of yarn that matches exactly. So if you want self-striping or a gradient or something, you'll get matching pairs of socks. And that's what I have here. You can see these are pretty worn out. They've even started to fade a little bit. I think I made these when I was going back to school about five years ago. So I've had them a while and I've worn them a lot. And they're looking a little dingy and worn, but that's because they have been on my feet so many times and they have been outside while I'm running and shoveling snow. And yeah, you can see that they're, they're getting worn pretty thin here on the foot. But um, I'm pretty sure this is the greatest of ease base. So again, this is like a merino nylon blend. If you have sock yarn with a little bit of nylon in it, um, yes, I realized that that is a, a synthetic fiber. So it's not going to break down and degrade like wool will once you're done with it and have to throw it out. Um, but it also means that your socks are going to last longer in the first place. I have made myself socks out of 100% wool that don't last more than a couple of seasons. So from the standpoint of sustainability, I have a hard time saying which one is better. You know, something with a little bit of synthetic fiber that's gonna last for years and years or something without synthetic fiber that's gonna come apart after just a couple of seasons. I don't know. So this is one pair I have from Knit Circus Yarn. This is another pair. This is a rainbow gradient and you can see that, so again with the short row heels, this is actually an afterthought heel um, where I took the, clearly I made <laughs> the whole sock starting from the red end and after I got done with the toe, I went back and used that blue for the heel. So this is pretty cool. Um, and this is also well worn. You can see that it's pilling. It's got like globs of fiber coming out and that's no commentary on the yarn. It has more to do with the fact that I have been wearing these very consistently for the past four or five years. And you can really see here on the heel how they've worn. It's pretty thin. And again, once there's a hole in these, I'm not gonna bother to darn them. I'll probably just toss them. Cause I like making socks. I like having fresh pairs of socks. The last pair I'm gonna show you is, and, and I know I've showed this on my uh, YouTube channel before because I made these sometime in the last, I think I made these last summer, um, but I really like them and I'm looking forward to using more of this kind of yarn. So these are socks that I made using Republica Unicornia BFL sock, which is um, blue faced luster yarn mixed with some nylon and this is a speckle of some kind and you can see I did the regular heel flap and gusset for these because it's not self-striping or anything. Um, but every time I wear them, they get a little softer and a little more pliable and they're just very comfortable on my feet. So I'm looking forward to making more socks. I don't think I have any more of this sock. Oh, I might have one skein of hers. Um, in BFL sock, but I'm looking forward to using this, this particular breed of wool more because I like how it feels on my foot and I like how it just gets softer and more pliable over time. And yet it's, uh, you know, it's not, it's sort of got a halo now, but it's not pilling. It's not getting weaker. So 
I'm pretty happy with that. Let me talk about my approach to sock yarn stash. Um, I have a fair amount. Let me show you. This is the tub where I keep my sock yarn stash. It is, I got this from Ace Hardware. It's weatherproof. So there's like a strip of foam going around the top of the lid. So this should keep out humidity, critters, you name it. Um, we've had flooding in our basement before and it was awful. And all of my yarn is now stored in weatherproof containers, except for the overflow. Now, I used to have my sock yarn stash actually in a bigger tub. So this is, um, this is good that it fits in a smaller one now. I currently have a bit of an overflow situation, which is okay. Uh, but I wanna show you, I wanna show you some of the, the yarns that I've got. I'm gonna start with Knit Picks because um, while I have some more kind of niche and unusual sock yarns to show you, I'm gonna start with Knit Picks because it's a company that's very well known and very familiar. And um, they offer a lot of affordable options for people who can't necessarily be buying, you know, the bespoke artisan hand dyed things. Um, and also, you know, I've got some opinions about all that and I think I'll share about that. So Knit Picks has a variety of sock yarns on offer. I've tried some of them. I don't tend to stash it. Um, I tend to buy a few, use them up, be done, move on. Um, the exception being Stroll Tweed, which I seem to have piled up for some reason, but we'll get there. What I wanna say about affordability, there's a lot of opinions on that. Um, cost is a factor in what makes crafting accessible or inaccessible for people. Um, unfortunately, because supplies can get very expensive, there's obviously a lot of luxury yarn or small, you know, small scale pr production yarn that's more expensive because of the labor and everything that goes into it. There's a reason things cost what they do. Um, I think sometimes that gets conflated with, sometimes that turns into elitism and sometimes it can feel like elitism, even if that wasn't the intention. Um, and I think that's too bad. I think there should be a way for everybody who wants to be able to knit or craft, there should be a way for them to do it. Cost shouldn't be this big barrier or um, a reason that you feel left out, right? It shouldn't have, that shouldn't have anything to do with your skills. So I'm glad that Knit Picks is an option for people, um, especially with the, they have some offerings that are, um, I don't know if they're like hand dyed or hand painted, but they certainly appear that way. So, it just expands the options for people who don't have just endless disposable income for craft supplies. At the same time, I wanna be careful how I say this. Um, I mean, I read a lot of forums online and I've seen, particularly with nitpicks, I think because they have marketed themselves as like the affordable uh, option, for all these different yarns, including with a lot of natural fibers and, and luxury fibers. Um, every time their prices go up, I see people complaining about it online. Um, prices of everything are going up. And in some cases, there are large corporations that are basically getting away with making costs like they have, there are some corporations that are making huge profits on the backs of consumers and they manage to just blame inflation for everything. Okay, I'm thinking of like large automakers and um, like large processed food companies. They are making out like bandits. Um, I don't know if that's the case with nitpicks. I know that climate change is causing a lot of pressure on supply chains for various reasons. You're seeing crops destroyed. You're seeing a lot of stress on animals like sheep, for example, <laughs> that produce the wool that goes into our yarn. Um, we're seeing interruptions in transportation. Fuel costs are going up. Extreme weather is delaying uh, shipping in some cases or just 
obliterating production in some cases. So there's a lot of reasons that prices are going up and it's not 100% companies making a buck. Um, I don't know behind the scenes of yarn and wool production enough to tell you what the reasons are for every single price increase at every single company. So I can't tell you whether all of that is justified or not, but I can tell you that I see anytime prices go up at knit picks, I see complaints in the forums about it. Um, and I think that if it, when wages are stagnant, seeing the prices of things go up feels incredibly unfair. Um, and I think it is unfair, especially when it comes to essentials in life, like housing and food and, and utilities. Um, crafting is a little more gray territory for me. So the other thing I'm going to say is that I think that for people who are discussing affordability in crafting and framing it as an accessibility issue, I think there are a lot of people out there who are right on the money, so to speak, who are um, really talking about gatekeeping and elitism and all those things I mentioned. Um, but I think there are also some people who just want to get a lot of stuff cheap. And I don't really appreciate that. Like we, ha we have some things in our society that are cheaper than they should be. Like a lot of clothing is cheaper than it should be. It's cheap because it is produced in a way that is very damaging to the environment and is a huge violation on labor rights and people's rights. So, you know, I don't know how much of that applies to yarn production, but I think that it's more complicated sometimes than we all want to acknowledge. Maybe I'll just leave it at that. Anyway. Generally speaking, Knit Picks is more affordable than a lot of other yarns out there, um, in part because they're a large company and they can produce a lot. And some of the sock yarns that I have used from them are Stroll Tweed. So I'll just show you three colors that I have handy that I pulled out. I stocked up on this when it went on sale a couple of summers ago and I, I need to use it up because I have more than I need. Um, I actually got a bunch of this Firecracker Heather, which is a nice, red color um because i thought i might make a sweater out of it i don't know if i will because it's super wash and i don't love using super wash for sweaters even though that's what i'm wearing right now uh but we'll see we'll see um i have made using stroll tweed i have not made anything for myself so i cannot say how it holds up as a rule but I've made hats out of it as gifts. I made a baby sweater on commission about a year ago that was very well received, loved that. And I have made socks for my dad and my brother and my daughter. I haven't seen my daughter wear her socks a whole lot. Um, it's been too warm, see above, re-climate change and our freakishly warm winter. So I don't know, and plus she just got them for Christmas. So I can't tell you how well this holds up for socks. It's very soft, so I wouldn't be surprised if it pilled quickly. But I like knitting with it, and I, I just like how the colors look. Um, the base yarn is most of them, or all of them, are heathered, and then they've got these tweed bits, and the tweed bits are all the same color no matter what color way you're using. So they all kind of go together, and I think that's very nice. This comes in 50 gram put-ups too, so um, you don't have to buy a whole lot at once if you don't want to. So I have this in several colors and I have plans to make more socks. I also really wanna make um, the, oh, what is it called? It's a pattern by Imagine Landscape. She has these tree, these trees, and I think she uses droll tweed for some of the samples. Um, there's like an apple tree and you can do one without the apples in autumn colors. And I've always thought it would be really cool to make two or three of them and kind of set them with gnomes up as a little fall display. Um, I just haven't done it yet. Another nitpick sock yarn that I've used is Hawthorne. Again, this is something I don't stash as a rule, but I bought a bunch last month. Uh, picked out some colors with my son because he, I think the socks that I've made him out of Hawthorne, Knit Picks Hawthorne, are his favorite. 
So I won't go on too much about this because I've talked about those socks in other episodes. Feel free to, to watch my previous few episodes to hear more about it. Um, but these are three of the colors that he picked out. This one, this blue one is called Klamath Falls. This is Conifer and this is Grant's Pass, I think. Um, dark, moody, masculine colors, very much in his, in his, uh, stylistic wheelhouse, if you want to think of it that way. Hawthorne, it's a, these are fingering weight. They're listed that way, but it feels to me more like a sport weight. And there is less yardage per hundred grams than you would typically find in a skein of sock yarn. This is only 357 yards. So, um, I also find it to be very sturdy. Um, my son wears these socks all the time and he wears them pretty hard. And, you know, the ones I made him like a year or two ago are still holding up really well without a ton of pilling. Um, the color is fading a little bit, but otherwise, otherwise they're holding up pretty well. So, um, I like having some of this on hand so that I always have the some Hawthorne to make him socks out of. Now, the other yarn, the last sock yarn from Knit Picks that I wanna show you is Felici. Um, and this goes right along without affordability discussion. So Felici, if you're not familiar with it, you can see on the labels here, it says special reserve. And that's because Knit Picks produces colorways. You know, they'll have a run of colorways that will come out, I don't know when, at some point during the year. And once those colors sell out, that's it, they're gone. Um, the next year they'll run new colorways. So it's kind of brilliant marketing because it generates a lot of FOMO, that stands for fear of mar missing out. Um, because it's limited edition, special reserve, you have to buy it right when it's available or you may never be able to get it again. Um, so it's very tempting. I've never fallen to this temptation, but never say never. It's very tempting sometimes to just buy all the colors and just have them on hand, you know, in case I need them. I've never done that. I've managed to keep, to limit my purchases of Felici to only a couple at a time. I've not done it that often. Um, actually, the last time I bought Felici was three years ago. I bought four or five colors. I knit them all up, gave all those socks away. That's it. <laughs> like I didn't have any more of this yarn for a long time. Um, and that was fine because I have plenty of other sock yarn. What I like about Felici, it feels nice. It's nice to knit with. It is, I think, an 80-20. No, it's 75%. Superwash Merino, 25% nylon, so it's a pretty typical sock, sock yarn. It's 230 yards for 50 grams, so it's pretty fine weight. Um, it comes in these 50 ball, 50 gram balls, so you only need to buy as much as you need. Like if you're making socks for a small person, like I used to get this and make it for my kids when they were really little, so I only needed one ball for them. Um, but the colors are really nice. You get stripes that are about a half inch wide in a typical adult sock. And I've always had pretty good luck with the quality. Um, sometimes I've read that there are quality control issues where there'll be like dye splotches or fading or whatever, but so far I've been lucky. Um, they changed this yarn this year. They're not releasing Felici. They renamed it. They made the stripes thinner. And they're selling it in 100 gram balls. And I don't like any of the colors that they're selling, so I haven't bought any, which is fine. The reason I have these is that I found someone online who had a bunch on D-Stash. And so I decided to go ahead and buy these because I like Felici for, because it's self-striping, the yarn basically does all the work for you. Uh, it's great for on-the-go knitting, for when I have a lot of meetings or times like this, when I have a lot going on in my life and I, my brain is just like, I have a hard time focusing and I feel like I'm being pulled in too many directions and having something very easy and basic to knit on that doesn't require following a chart or a pattern just helps kind of keep me, help me pull everything together. 
So I'm glad that I have some more Felici now on hand. Um, the two colors here, this is Rustic Cabin. This is from, I don't know. I don't keep track of their releases very closely, but I think this is at least a couple years old. And this one is called Beyond the Wall, which is these nice gray and blue stripes in different shades. So Felici being a commercially produced self-striping yarn makes it a lot more affordable, again, for people who want self-striping yarn but can't afford the hand-dyed ones. Um, I think it's really important to support the small businesses and hand dyers. Uh, you know, if, if you like their product and if they're reliable and you like their ethics and you have the money to spend, absolutely support them. Um, but I do understand that that can be a lot of money to, to, to lay out for just a pair of socks. Um, so it's nice that there is this option for people too. Okay, let's get to some of my more interesting sock yarns that I've collected because I have made so many socks that I'm interested in trying some different things. I'm gonna show you first, let's see. I have a couple skeins of this yarn from the fiber company. It's called Amble. And this isn't like that hard to find. I don't think. Um, I mean, the fiber company is, it's available in a lot of yarn shops and I'm sure online too. But I got this at a local yarn shop to me. It's called the Sousier. It's great. They've been in business for 20 years or more and they're, they're like right off the bike path. I like to bike there. But I saw that they were carrying this and I picked up a couple skeins because it feels so nice and it's a blend of fibers that I have not tried before in socks. So, it is described on the label as a conscious blend of washable merino wool, alpaca, and recycled nylon. So that caught my interest. Um, so I think that this is generally more um, environmentally friendly than most sock yarns you find. Understand that sock yarn is usually made out of superwash and the chemical processes involved in making yarn washable is not great for the environment. It uses a lot of water, it uses some chemicals that are just bad. Um, so I think the process they use to make this washable is a little kinder to the earth. Um, and they also use recycled nylon. I don't know how that works, but it also means that it's a little more durable than if it was just wool and alpaca. Um, alpaca in sock yarn, like I would still, obviously I haven't made this into socks yet, but I would probably still hand wash it because I don't know how washable you can make alpaca fiber. I would think that's pretty difficult. But I like this color. It's a very like scummy green, great for socks. I also got this, what's it called? Is, this, is there a name for this color? called cross paths but you can see it's a marled like cream and very light tan so I thought this would be good for like hiking socks maybe with a, a strong cable going down the side or something I haven't totally decided what to knit out of it yet but I liked both of these and I, I wanted something a little different than than the normal like 80 20 blends I've been using so these are two sock yarns I have in my stash Speaking of different like blends or different wools, um, I have two skeins from Republica Unicornia of Targi Sock. 90% superwash US Targi wool, 10% nylon. These uh, come in 115 gram skeins at 465 yards. So again, it's a little heavier than regular sock yarn, maybe a little closer to sport weight, um, I made socks for my friend. I still haven't given them to her because I haven't seen her in a while. And I talked about this on this channel before, but I think this is the color tea and oranges. But it just, it felt so good to knit these socks. Something about that Targi wool, even though it's super wash, 
it just felt so good. I used size one and a half needles and I cast on few, I think I cast on 60 stitches, which is fewer than I usually do because it's like meatier yarn, it's thicker yarn. Um, but I just love how these feel. I can't wait to give them to her. I just, I need to, she is super busy. I'm super busy. I just, we need to get together so I can give her these socks. Uh, not like it's cold enough to wear heavy wool socks, but whatever. I think she would like them. Um, but I need to make a pair for myself and see how they wear. This colorway is called Luna Moth. It's a lot of different greens. And this colorway, I had to buy this because it's called Get It Gladys. Named after Gladys the Orca, who has been leading the charge to attack yachts off the coast of Spain. Um, it seems like orcas are more intelligent than we give them credit for, and apparently they're, they're on a mission to punish the excesses of the super rich, and I can get behind that, so. Plus it's just a bunch of really nice blues. But I have to say, this is the first time that I have purchased a skein of yarn based solely on the color, the name of the color. I don't know that I've ever done that before, but Republica Unicornia is, I've talked about them a lot before, but uh, the company is just delightful. Um, they're based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and um, everything is made by and dyed by Kathleen, who is just, just seems like a really delightful human being. So I'm happy to support her business and, and buy her sock yarn. Okay, the last sock yarn from my stash that I wanna show you today, I just got this and I haven't tried it yet. It's called Rambler Yarn. It's a new yarn from the Woolly Thistle, which is a shop. Uh, they're online, but they're based in New Hampshire. The Woolly Thistle is a good place to go um, if you're looking for um, European brands that often aren't available. Like if you want Jameson and Smith or something like that. Um, I don't think I've ever placed an order with them before, but I like browsing their site and seeing what they've got. So Rambler is, um, I'll just read you the label. Inspired by our love for British breeds and sourced from American wools within the Southern Adirondack Fiber Producers Cooperative, Rambler is spun in New York State. Crisp and wooly, this three-ply, 100% wool yarn is sturdy enough for socks, mitts, and so much more. It's a blend of Dorset, so it's 80% Dorset, which is like a really hardy, I think like long wool, Cordale, and Gray Romney. So those are very sturdy wool breeds. Um, I would not machine wash this. It's not been treated for superwash. And notice there's no nylon in it or any other synthetic fibers. And when I'm just holding it, like it's not scratchy because I'm not super sensitive to wool, but I don't think I'd want this next to my neck. I could see this making a very nice sturdy pair of mittens, um, but I am most interested in trying it for socks because I haven't, uh, I haven't ever made socks out of non superwash yarn. No, I did once accidentally. Those were a gift for my father-in-law years and years and years ago, and he wore them once and then they went through the wash and felted. <laughs> Never made myself a pair of socks with non-superwash yarn, but I would like to. So I have this natural color. I have this pine green. I kind of went nuts because December was my birthday month, so I just treated myself to several skeins of this. Lichen, which is a paler green. Golden Fern, which is a really lovely, well, golden color, sort of golden green color. And then the cherry on top, this is called Trillium and it's this gorgeous, gorgeous red. So I love how these go together. So I might very well make myself a bunch of socks and I'll probably have enough left over to make color work mittens or something. There's 420 yards. 400 gram skein. So pretty typical put up in terms of 
sock yarn and I'm very happy that this is all in my stash. Um, I think that's all I'm going to show you today. I have other sock yarn, but it's mostly just sort of your typical hand dyed superwash merino nylon yarn, um, which I don't think is very interesting to go through one by one, but I like putting different kinds of socks on my feet and I've made so many that I'm like ready to try some other things. So that's what I have to show you today. I have other sock yarn, but it's not as interesting to talk about because it's all just like hand dyed this speckled that. Uh, but I'm sure as I knit with it, you'll see it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little stash flash and I will see you next time.